Now we're going to look at some examples of problems that actually didn't deal with end behavior now that we've looked at kind of the basics of what we're talking about. So the first thing we're going to do on a problem like this is we're going to need to find the degree and the leading coefficient. Now in a problem like this where it's written in polynomial form, it usually isn't too difficult. So uh, first of all, we're determine our leading coefficient. And we're going to do this, uh, leading coefficient. To find our leading coefficient, what we'll need to look for is we'll need to look for the term that has the highest degree. Sometimes it'll be written in standard form to where it's descending in order, but sometimes you may have to go through and look and see if you can't determine uh, where the term with the highest degree is. So the term with the highest degree is represented by this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the leading coefficient of that, and the leading coefficient here, since there is not a coefficient in front of the x, it's assumed to be 1. Uh, the important part for us is that's telling us that obviously that 1 is positive. And then next what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't determine the degree. And the degree in a polynomial like this, again, all you have to do is look at the exponents. So our degree in this case is 3. Uh, you look at each term to determine what's the highest uh, exponent represented. So 3 would be the highest, so that's the degree of our polynomial. Uh, what that tells us is it is going to be odd. So now that we know that our uh, leading coefficient is positive and our degree is odd, what we can do is determine the end behavior. So the left side will fall, and the right side of our graph, or the right end, either one, will rise. One thing you need to know is that anytime your degree is odd, uh, the two sides will differ in the way they are going. One will fall, one will rise. However, if your degree is even, they will have the same characteristic. Either they will both go up or they'll both go down. So you can look back to the table to refer to that. Next, we'll look at another example. Now this example is a little bit different because this time our polynomial is given to us in factored form. So the leading coefficient isn't going to be that bad. Uh, to find our leading coefficient in a problem like this, uh, again, just like the last one, we look at the term uh, basically in the front. Because what we're doing is we're multiplying all those together. So when you do that, you'll have negative 4 times 1 times 1, or in other words, our leading coefficient will be negative 4. And again, the important part of that is that it is negative. Now our degree is going to be a little bit more difficult because in factored form, we're actually finding the product of all these. So the degree of this uh, factor is 1. So this has a degree of 1. Because this is squared, this will have a degree of 2. And then this monomial right here has a variable that has a 3. So that degree is 3. Now unlike in the last one where it was written in polynomial form, uh, it was the highest one. Well here we're multiplying these together. So if you take 3 and multiply it by 2 times 1, when you multiply like bases, you actually add the exponents. So the total degree that we get in this problem, the degree of our problem would be 6. And of course, that is even for us. So since we have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, we will say the left side or left end will, uh, in this case, fall. And then the right end will also fall. So you can see, because we have an even degree, we knew that both the sides would have to do the exact same thing. And because the leading coefficient is negative, they'll both fall. So this is an example of an end behavior.